because God got a season for you. And if you trust in him, he's going to bring it to pass. And when he brings it to pass, God will blow your mind. This church and our amazing services on a wonderful Sunday morning. They say that Atlanta is a hot spot, but right now the hot spot is right here at Mount Ephraim Baptist Church with our dynamic deacons, Deacon Jason Braddock and Deacon Roger Long. Let's go get ready for an amazing morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. This is a hot spot. You know, every time I wake up in the morning, I realize. God has allowed me to see another day, and that's something to be excited about. So we're just going to have a good time in the Lord today. We're not going to waste any time talking. We're just going to go on and have a good time. Come on, D. Let your light shine, shine, shine. You ought to let your light shine, shine, shine. from Philippians second chapter beginning at verse number one and King James reads as such if there be therefore any consolation in Christ if any comfort in love if any fellowship of the spirit if any bowels and mercies fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind 
Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. All right. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, All right. but every man also on the things of others. Let his mind be in you, which is also in Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, the word of God for the people of God. Let every heart say amen. amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, when we were sinking deep in all right, far from the peaceful shores, very deep staying within, seeking to rise no more. Your love lifted us. And now, dear Father, boldly we stand before your throne. All right, sir. Recognizing that no one is greater, no one is more caring, no one is more loving, no one is more merciful, no one is more forgiving. And we recognize this morning, dear Father, that you are worthy of all our praise. Yeah, yeah. This morning, dear Father, Mount Ephraim bows before you just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Oh, yes, yeah. Thank you, dear Father, for this day that we've never seen before. Even on the way here, dear Father, just taking note of your handiwork. The blue sky, the green grass, the beautiful trees, and your finest creation, mankind, dear Father. We thank you this morning, dear Father. We thank you for providing for us, dear Father, all week long. We thank you for shelter. We thank you for sustenance. We thank you, dear Father, for there are so many, dear Father, that went without lacking, but for, for some reason or another, dear Father, you blessed us and allowed us to remain. And so this morning, dear Father, as a congregation, we stand before you, thanking you. All right. And you too know also, dear Father, all things about us. You know that we have many needs, we have many desires, and there are many in this congregation and even the world, dear Father, that are teetering and tottering on the brink of chaos in their financial lives and some, dear Father, in their personal family lives. And this morning, dear Father, we just ask you to do as you have always done, and that is to make a way out of no way. All right, sir. We know, dear Father, that you and you alone have the power to open some doors. We know that you and you alone have the power to close some doors, dear Father. And we just ask you to have your way in each person's life, dear Father every member of this congregation and every member of the listening audience this morning, dear Father. And then too, dear Father, we just ask you to be with those who are on our sick and shut-in list, dear Father. All right, all right. Those whose bodies are racking with pain, those who are who are on their bed of affliction this morning, dear Father. We know this morning, dear Father, that you can send your word to comfort them, dear Father. And this morning, that is our prayer. And also this morning, dear Father, we just ask that you might continue to keep your hands on our pastor. Yes, sir. This man that you have put over this house of worship, dear Father. We pray that you might continue to build him up, continue to strengthen his body, dear Father. And continue to provide for him as you always have. Yeah. And we also pray, dear Father, that you might continue to bless his wife, his helpmate, dear Father. Continue to see to it, dear Father, that she has all the things that she needs, dear Father. Build her up where she is torn down, dear Father, and help her to know how much we all love her and appreciate her, dear Father. And for them both, dear Father, we pray that you might put a hedge of protection around them, allowing no hurt, harm, or danger to come near them. 
We also ask this morning, dear Father, if it is your will, that you might stretch forth your hand as well over our entire official board, dear Father. From the chair and our vice chairman all the way down, dear Father, to our newest members, dear Father. Have your way in each life. And then for all of the auxiliaries, dear Father, that are represented by this church, whether they're on the mother's board, whether they sit at the door as ushers, dear Father, whether they are musicians, dear Father, or sing in the choir, dear Father, video ministry, everyone, dear Father, that has anything to do with this Mount Ephraim family, dear Father, we pray that you might meet their needs and build them up, dear Father, and help them to know that the kingdom appreciates the work that they have put in over all these many years, dear Father. And we can't wait till we're able to get together as a congregation once again. And then too, dear Father, we just ask that you might have your way in governmental affairs in this land, dear Father. We know that no power is greater than yours, dear Father. Even that man that continues in Washington to sign executive order after executive order, dear Father. We know that you have the power to issue a divine order. And this morning, dear Father, that is our prayer. That you might have your way in the governmental affairs of this nation as well, dear Father. For we know that you are still able to stir the pot of our circumstances, dear Father. And then too, dear Father, we know that we have sinned. We know that we have fallen short. We know that we have done things that haven't been pleasing in your sight. And for that this morning, dear Father, we beg you for your mercy and ask you to forgive us. We want you to know this morning, dear Father, that we love you and we appreciate the ransom sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. And this morning, dear Father, these are the prayers of Mount Ephraim. And we ask all of these things in the name of your loving son, our blessed Savior, the one who was able. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You know, thinking about back to the old days, I can hear my old friend, Deacon George Bunkley, singing this song as he closed out of devotion. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. He's 
the man regulator Nobody but you He's a man regulator Nobody but you But when I was in trouble but you, Lord, and everything that happens that we see happening today, nobody but you can control it and handle all of our cares, Lord. We cast them all upon you, and we thank you so much for allowing us to serve you once again and bring you devotion and praise as we begin our service today. And at this time, we'll turn the remainder of the service back into the hands of our First Lady, Evangelist Lorraine Jock White. To God be the glory. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We certainly thank our deacons for an amazing and wonderful, exciting devotion. And now we're going to continue in our service with our announcements from Dr. Angela Taylor. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. On behalf of Dr. White, Sister White, and the entire Mount Ephraim family, let me take this opportunity to welcome you to our 730 service. We pray that something is said or a song is sung that really blesses your heart. And at the time that Dr. White extends the invitation of discipleship, that you give God your heart. And when we return to the fellowship together in this edifice, that you give Dr. White your hand. To those celebrating a birthday today or on this past week we say happy birthday to you we pray that your celebration was a wonderful one to those celebrating an anniversary happy anniversary to you as well these are your announcements Mount Ephraim we would like to remind you to join us every Wednesday at 7 30 a.m. for the prayer call with our pastor the number and the access code is on our website and on our Facebook page I will include that number as well as the access code on uh, in the comments of our service on today so that you might be able to write that number down as well and participate in the prayer call we also invite you to join us at 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays on Facebook Live for worship on Wednesdays with the pastor as we have a phenomenal time in our midweek Bible study on Saturdays at 6 o'clock p.m. we have our power and we would love to have you join and of course every Sunday we come to you virtually live streaming as well as Facebook Live with our services. My nephew, we continue to be grateful for all of the gifts and donations that you continue to give to my nephew from even during this difficult time. And we say thank you and we are humbled by the love that you continue to show. And so for those of you all who continue to ask, how can we be a part of the growth of Mount Ephraim? We would like for you to know that you can give to Mount Ephraim by going on to Givelify. You can download that to your smartphone or your tablet. Select Mount Ephraim and follow the prompts to make sure that you give. You can also mail your donations to Mount Ephraim P.O. Box. 92351 Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Again, that's
address P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. You can also give by going to our website. And after you arrive at our website, click the donation button and follow those prompts. And that will help you give as well. And we are so appreciative. On last Sunday, I was able and I was happy to announce that we will now have masks Mount Ephraim Mass right here, I hope that you all can see it, for um, sale here at Mount Ephraim. They will have our Mount Ephraim logo. They will have our, uh, in addition to the name of the church, as well as our information and demographic uh, information on there. The mask will be black with gold lettering, and it will have adjustable ear loops. There'll be washable spandex uh, fabric to help position it on your face because we all know that your mask must cover your mouth and your nose. It will include carbon filters and it is made here in the USA. Funds will benefit the church and they are asking for $18 for this mask. Again, the cost of this mask is $18. We thank you in advance for your support. For those of you all who would like to do this, we ask that you see Deacon Jerry Alexander for more information. And I'm certain that I'll be coming with more information for you as we move forward. I also would like to announce that we will be having a back to school uh, event here for our youth. Again, back to school, drive-in, family movie night, school supply giveaway will be, ha will be held here. Free entry and there will be DJ music. We will bless 10 families with Chromebook computers. You must be present to win. Strict social distance policies will be enforced and we're asking that you wear your mask at all times. This event will be Friday, October 21st at 7.30 p.m. here at Mount Ephraim. For more information, you can go to our Facebook page. We have the flyer on our Facebook page. That contact number is 404-307-9890 and the email address is 718E. Uh, info at gmail.com and they would love to have all the youth to come out participate and join also friendly reminder that we will be having our COVID-19 testing here that's right it's going to return to Mount Ephraim and it's going to be absolutely free we invite you to come out and we invite you to participate have your friends and family come because you need to know your status as we continue to work through this process. The, the COVID-19 testing will be August 31st from 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Again, that's Monday, August 31st from 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Walk-ins are welcome, but they strongly encourage you to register. You can go to the Fulton County website to register or call and schedule your appointment. This concludes my versions of the announcements, Mount Ephraim, and now I'm going to call on Deacon Roger Long to come and do some follow-ups. Remember, mask up, wash your hands, Practice social distancing to reduce this spread and always, always remain Mount Ephraim strong. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. I'm Roger Long and I have the high privilege and the distinct honor of standing in as spokesperson for pastor and wife appreciation. The word of God is clear in encouraging us to show our love and appreciation to our pastor and first lady as they continue to labor for the Lord so faithfully in the church. The Bible tells us at 1 Timothy 5.17, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Now, although we're not able to gather as is our normal custom, I am persuaded that we as a congregation will not allow a global pandemic to prevent us from celebrating and acknowledging the work of our pastor and first lady, the Reverend R.L. and Mrs. White. This is especially significant as we continue to celebrate Mount Ephraim's golden anniversary, 50 years of bringing Christ's message of hope and reconciliation to the world. Today, 
I am appealing to each of you who have experienced the love, faithfulness, and generosity of our pastor and first lady to demonstrate your gratitude for their fine efforts and unwavering service. You can do this by putting your gift for Dr. and Mrs. White in your offering envelope and designating the amount you would like for them to have. You also have the option of addressing your gift directly to the attention of Dr. and Mrs. White and mailing it to them in this manner. Dr. and Mrs. White, care of Mount Ephraim, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia, 30314. For members of a congregation using Givelify, you too may appropriate your gift by selecting the Pastor and Wife Appreciation tab. We must all agree that God has been good to us and spared no good thing. And for the receipts, we need look no further than this pastor and first lady who give their all week after week. Surely every good and perfect gift is from the Lord. Now let us govern ourselves accordingly. It is my prayer that God will continue to richly bless each of you and the work of Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. We certainly want to thank Dr. Taylor and Deacon Roger Long for bringing us up to date with what's going on. Thank you so very much. And now it's time for this dynamic young lady. Let me tell you something about this sister. Now, I know she can sing. I know she can direct a choir. She can sing by herself or she can sing with a group and she can hear exactly what part is missing and put that part in there from soprano to bass, whatever it is, she can do it. And when we had the monitor from testing, I needed some help out there. And who showed up but Mrs. Carolyn Bridges. She stayed with me all day. And I'm so grateful for that. And I want to call on her now to do which one of the things that she does best, and that's to sing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Mrs. Carolyn Bridges. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. Good morning. Before I get started, I want to say, as I was coming in this morning, I had just gotten off the phone with someone else and I'm about to get on 285. Uh, I saw a car coming directly at me. So I stopped right there where I was. I didn't care who was behind me or whatever, but I just started laying on the horn. And all I could find myself saying this morning was, thank you, Jesus, for keeping me. Thank you for keeping me. But the car was flying, headed straight at me. So I had to say, thank God for keeping me this morning. Oh, yes. One of my favorite songs, I love you, Jesus. I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything How many of you can say that? I lift my hands in total adoration unto you you reign on the throne for you are god and god alone 
Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love me in your arms. You are the shelter from the storm when all my friends are gone. You were right there all alone. I never known a love like this before. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. If you know it, help me sing it. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yeah. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. I love you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you with my whole mind. Hey, hey, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. We want to thank Mrs. Carolyn Bridges for that wonderful selection. I love you, Jesus, more than anything. And you know, every week I want to bring us a scripture that we can think about and meditate on all week until we are together again. Today it's Psalm 118 and 5, and it says, in the message translation, push to the wall, I call to God from the wide open spaces, and he answered, God now is at my side and I'm not afraid. That's what you gotta do. When you feel like you can't go on any further, like you're pushed to the wall, just call on the Lord and he'll come see about you. We are now gonna call on Dr. R.L. White to come on up here and bring us a word from the Lord. Dr. R. L. White, Jr. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Thank you, Deacon Roger Long. 
I welcome you to our services today. Wherever you are, whether you're in an automobile or or at home, it's good to know that you're there. During the week, some of our members say to me, when you get ready to move, when you close the service, I get up wherever I am and I move with Mount Ephraim because I feel like I'm right at the church in the service. And we thank God for each of you today. And it is our prayer that our services will benefit each of you. May God bless you is our prayer. There are times we think no one loves us. There are times that we think nobody cares. Carolyn, thank you so much. You bless us. Let me thank our, our background. And I thank the members for moving swiftly, making sure. And these two preachers sharing with us today, Reverend Michael and Brother, God bless you. I'm glad to see you today. During these times, when you're going through something, I want to say this to you. <clears throat> there are times we think no one loves us. There are times we think no one really cares. But there is one, only one, who will help you bear the load and he loves me. He loves me. He really loves me. God really cares. He really loves me. Mm -hmm. The way gets rough. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the mountains get so hard, so hard to climb, but there is one, only one, only one who will help you. And the Lord and he loves me. He really loves me. He loves me. He really loves me. God really cares. He really loves me. Can you tell? You can say yes. Oh, yes. I know, I know, I know. He loves me. Mm -hmm. He loves me. He really loves me. He loves me. He really loves me. God really. Yeah. Well, 
wherever you are today if you be a feeling by yourself just say yes oh yes I know he loves me I know he loves me when you feel by yourself just say yes oh yes I know he loves me he really loves me he really loves me he loves me for the hard work that she puts in during the week. Dr. Taylor at her side. And it takes more than an effort to keep things rolling. But you in the audience have made it worth it all. This week has been another heavy week. There were two more funerals this week. One Reverend Sister Paula Singleton, longtime member of Mount Ephraim. Another one yesterday. For Brother Star. Sister Star's husband, she's a faithful member. And then I told you three or four weeks ago about the young man who went to the store to get some juice for his mother. When he got back home, she had gone to be with the Lord. And on top of that, his father contracted this virus. The funeral has not yet been announced. We had talked with him yesterday, Antoine. And he's working on that tomorrow. He said, Pastor, I don't know what to do. And then he said, I've got two brothers. And now they have contracted. And then we wonder, how much can one family take? We're praying for his family, him. His father is now home, but he's still struggling. And I said to Lorraine on the way in, God has given us a vivid sign. Those people who say that God is not real because they can't see him. That's why so many people are falling by the wayside with this virus. Some saying, I, I just don't believe it. I can't see it. But this is something real. Yes, it is. And I pray that those of us who have been affected the most will let somebody else know 
the pain that it can cause. We pray for Sister Beverly Coma today to bring the son Demetrius, Jason Coffee. Jason, you better get on back up in here, man. We miss you. And I know the Lord is going to complete your healing. Sister Nikki Moss affected by this coronavirus. Sister Teresa Copeland of our officers group in preparation for officership in the church. She too has been affected. Tiffany Larkin we pray for you today. As you can see, our congregation has been affected. I had no idea that we would be out of the building this long. But the God that I serve is still in control. Yes. And wherever you are, will you bow your heads in prayer? Lord, in the midst trials and tribulations we can still feel your presence and even though we don't fully understand why some things must be but we know that your wisdom is infinite And there is no searching of your understanding. And because of these things, we gather to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, O oh God, that in the midst of trials and tribulations you've never left us alone and now God as we look at our reactions every one of us have sinned and come short of your glory And we realize that we are only here by your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. So we pray forgiveness for our sins. And we beg you now to search our hearts. Anything that should not be there. We beg you to move it right now. And while we are praying, oh God, there are those who need us today. And together we all need you. We know you are still a way maker. Some have been put outdoors. Some have lost their jobs. But we know you are a way maker. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. So we pray right now, God, that you will touch everyone 
standing in the need of a financial blessing. And then, oh God, some today are sick. One touch can heal a feeble body. In the name of Jesus, heal that feeble body. Mm -hmm. Some have been depressed this week. Some have been standing at the crossroad. Sing, Lord, what shall I do? We know you are able to open up our understanding. So we say, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. For you are the potter. And we are the clay. Mold us. And make us. What you want us to be. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. This land is in trouble. Mm -hmm. Over 150,000 have lost their lives. We are in trouble. Millions are on the hospital bed. We are in trouble. Only you mm -hmm, can make a difference today. So we beg you right now, let your touch be in this land. Go, oh God, to the White House. Go, oh God, to the governor's mansion. Stop by the mayor's house. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. Mount Ephraim needs you. We can't do without you. Have your way in Mount Ephraim today. Lord, we need a touch. One touch is all that we need. Touch. Savior Scott. Give us strength to overcome. Touch the vice chairs. Touch the official board. Touch every member of Mount Ephraim Church. Have mercy right now. And then, Lord, when we've gone the last mile of the way, got to go reeling and rocking somewhere in a dying room. Lord, we don't know where death is. But one thing we know, if you be there, we won't be afraid to cross that swelling tide. Give us a home somewhere where the wicked shall cease from trouble. Somewhere where the weary shall be at rest. Somewhere uh, somewhere around your throne. These and other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you all the Jesus lead you all the way. 
He's a mighty good leader. He's a mighty good leader. He's a mighty good leader. My mother, he led my mother, he led my mother all the way, all the way from He's a mighty good doctor. He's a mighty good doctor. All the way. All the way from here to heaven. Let Jesus lead. Somebody got to go to court. He's a mighty good lawyer. He's a mighty good lawyer. He's a mighty good lawyer. Anybody in here who know what the Lord can do? Oh, yes. Is there anybody in here oh, yes. who called on the Lord oh, yeah. and He made a way yeah. out of no way? Does anybody know oh, yeah. that if you trust Him yeah. and never doubt, yeah. He will, he will bring you out? If you know it, say yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yes. yes. God bless you. I volunteer group here. Y'all do mighty good. Thank you so much. There is a word from the Lord, and today I'm not going to just read the text, but in the background, if you will turn to the first Corinthians chapter 13, and that whole chapter is our text for today. A subject, what happens when love grows cold? What happens when love grows cold? I can say without fear of contradiction, that one of the most overworked word in our language is love. 
in my opinion. We can be heard to use this word for everything in our lives. I love my new car. I love my clothes. I just love my house. I love my dog. I love to lie. Don't act shocky with that one. Every once in a while, I just have to tell a lie. I love shopping. Come on, ladies. I love football games. We love money. And I suggest today that the word love is an overworked word in the English language. Amen. Today I want to look at three kinds of love that are backed up by the Bible. Philia love, erotic love, and agape love. Amen. Philia love. There are just some people that you like to be around. Amen. It's kind of a brotherly love uh, or sisterly, if you will, love. The city of Philadelphia is known as the city of brotherly love. It is the place where the Constitution was signed. It is the place where the Declaration of Independence was signed from England. So when we have the word filia, love, it has the connotation of a deep, no hanky-panky love. You just love to do things together. Amen. Brother Jason has a crew that love to fish together. Him and Brother Calvin Franks and Lewis and Jason's mother, sometime during the week they're gonna get together and fish. And that's why every Sunday I come in and I say, now who's the champ this week? Brotherly love. Amen. Do you know somebody that you have a that kind of love with? Sister, do y'all have a special shopping buddy? Uh-huh. I knew that. Amen. But regardless to how close you may be over the years, sometimes the ones that you used to hang with, you slow it up. And after a while, you don't run together anymore. Why? Because 
somebody in the relationship betrayed the relationship and that has caused your heart your love to grow cold can I say to you today that it takes work to have friends for a long time and if you have a friend that you can trust you can be heard to say that this friend is like a sister or a brother to me and for some who didn't have that thank God for my friend and I will ask you to be faithful to your friendship because when you're not your love can grow cold. Can I get a witness here? And then there is a what we call erotic love that comes from the word eros. And it's explained as that chemistry between a man and a woman that has to do with your affections. It is that love that's like a magnet that draws two people together. And it has to do with the specialized care for each other. It has an air of mystique about it that it arouses one's deepest emotions for a certain person. The Greek believed that eros is a dangerous thing because it makes you lose control if you're not careful. What is it? about a certain person that catches the attention of a person that seems different than anybody else in the world. This person to everybody else is just another person. But to you, this person is different. Come on, somebody. And when this kind of love attacks, everything else is different about that person. That physique is different. To you, they talk differently. You like the way they handle themselves. When you get close to them, your heart begins to flutter. Somebody ought to talk back to me. And when you are with that person, nothing else matters. Time loses its importance. Beware. Real erotic love can be confused with lust. Some people are in love and others are in lust. Come on, somebody. Lust is not a true love because it goes no farther than your body. And you worried about your mind? All I see is your 
body. Preach right. And this accounts for people who when they are only concerned about your body, their chief task is to get you in the bed. Come on, somebody. And when somebody can ring your bell, they often mistake that for love. Preach why. Can I tell you a whole lot of folk can ring the bell. But the thing about lust is it's just temporary. Come on, somebody. Because when you mistake it for love, the time will come when your interest in that person will disappear. And if you thought that was love, you're going looking for another body that can ring your bell. Come on, somebody. Because you're confused about real love. Preach white. Real love lasts together for years to come. For I'm not only concerned about your body, but your mind. About how you're doing. And I'm concerned about your welfare, not because of what you can do for me. Not because you have made me love you. But my real love is that you do well. Amen. Real love still has some erotica, but it gives away to a companion love. And you begin to reminisce over the experiences that you have had together to build a longer relationship that's not built on sex alone. I know I'm saying some bold things here. When your love grows into a companion love, it doesn't mean that all of that heart fluttering, me shaking is gone. You just have to work on it a little harder. Come on, somebody. The real glue that holds this relationship together is the knowledge that it was God who put you together. And even though God puts relationships together, you have to help God out by continuing to do the things for each other that brought you together in the first place. But when love grows cold, even though God puts you together, sometimes Couples forget what it was that brought them together in the first place. So they stop doing the things that they used to do together. And then when you're around them, you slowly lose your care for your appearance at home. I hear men say, all I see is that same head rank. And that same flannel gown 
every night. <laughs> Amen. And then you get angry when he says somebody else looks good. Now she gets upset and she insults you. I get tired of your watermelon stomach coming to bed smelling like a sardine fish. And now you insult each other day by day. And love can grow cold. Am I doing all right? And when you lose that genuine concern for each other, you just go to bed thinking about how can I insult him or her in the morning? Come on, somebody. And now, you're thinking of divorce because I just don't enjoy being with you like I used to. Amen. You still need to compliment your mate. You still need to look at your wife, your girlfriend, whoever you've been shagging with, and say, you know, after all these years, even though there's a little more you to love, I still love you. Preach white. Or to that husband, uh, your mate, God sent you to me. And I can appreciate all the things that you do in my life. In other words, don't save all of your compliments for somebody else. But learn how to appreciate the one that God gave you. And when you can't appreciate it, the God that gave it to you can take it away. I know it takes some courage to say these things, but as you know, I do a lot of counseling. And I've seen relationships that could make it if they would just go back and relearn each other. When I say relearn each other, you, know, you see, you're not the same person now that you were years ago. And sometimes you lose each other. One, let, let's put this together like this. Maybe both of you were not saved and, and maybe the wife becomes saved and you're used to love going out, being together, partying, and staying out half the night and now she doesn't want to do that anymore. You look at her and say, you're not fun like you used to be. Ever since you went over that money from church. And white fill your head with all that stuff. And you ain't no fun no more. <laughs> Preach white. Wouldn't it be better if you just could grow together? That I don't lose you because I want to know what you're feeling. I want to know what you're thinking. And I want you to know what I'm thinking. And, and we can get together and push this thing together and ask God to glue us together with his love. It is because of this, I've heard that over 70% of 
parents in our group, single parent homes. That's a tragedy. Somehow God wants the black male to stand up to responsibility and to be a real father. God is calling on the wife to be a wife that's concerned about your welfare and that the two of you could come together and just go back to where it used to be when you used to take trips Amen. You said, wherever you go, I'll go. And you used to do things together, but now I can't stand the sight of you. Could it be that God's will has been lost? You know what I learned about people, not all of them, a few of them is that they don't fully understand and comprehend the word of God. And I want to tell you today, that whatever your relationship might be, whether it's a friend, erotic love, love for your children, it's going to take some work. And when you don't work at it, love grows cold and when love grows cold you can't stand each other talk to me somebody I said recently this pandemic thing that we're going through forces us to be at home with the ones that we don't love no more <laughs> That's why some of us, we just got to get out because I can't stand looking at you. Preach why. But don't you appreciate the fact that God has all power and that there is a reason for what we are going through now. I believe God is saying, what do I have to do to get your attention? Out of all of the things that we're going through, and thank God for the scientists, I'm going with the scientists, because all knowledge comes from God. Then you got some doing magical thinking. And then some saying, I don't care what's going on. Listen, you better care. Amen, somebody. What God is saying, you said, you don't believe in spirits. You don't believe in Holy Spirits. And God is saying, what I can do, I can send something your way that you can't see it. Talk to me, somebody. You don't know where it's coming from? All you know it comes in and God is saying that's the way my spirit is you can't see me talk to me somebody but I'm real and when I've been trying to get America to think and to look at Second Chronicles 7 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal 
the Lamb. Now he is calling on everybody but God. God is saying, what do I have to do to get your attention? Amen. I better move on now. Friends betray each other. Couples betray each other. Amen. But the most enduring love is called agape love. Everybody say agape love. It's translated in the Greek, which means in and of itself, love is just love. The essence of agape love is goodwill, commitment, and a non-failing love. This kind of love is used to describe the love of God. And everything that God does flows from his love. It is also used to show the depth of God's love for us. This kind of love is not a sentimental love, but this love sees a need and meets that need. That's what I've been giving our congregation the meaning for many years. Real love is, I may not feel good about giving you my last $10. But because I know you need it, love makes me do it anyhow. Even to your enemies. And I know y'all getting mad now. But when your enemy, you see them needing something, and they are broke, and they are hungry. And you look at him and say, if I just had one last piece of bread, I'd break it in half. And tell you to hold that half while I eat the other half. Because <laughs> I don't like you. I ain't never like you. I hope you will die. And yet you go around talking about I love everybody. Love is seeing a need and meeting that need and Galatians talk to us this way that if a brother or a sister is overtaken in a fault you who are of the household of God restore such a one in the spirit of meekness lest you yourself will be tempted translated that means just because you can see somebody else's sin and you've been able to hide yours so long don't think you got something on somebody else but the way you treat them is the same way you'll be treated that's why I'm glad today that God loves the unlovable God's love is unconditional. Come on, somebody. And the agape love is what love does. In other words, God is showing his love for us every day. In spite of all of that bad you've done, he still wakes you up in the morning. In spite of your meanness, he still supplies your every need. That's what love does. And the writer, the Apostle Paul, in what we call the love chapter, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels 
and have not love. I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all miracles and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, I, got, I can brag on how much faith I got. You may have faith so that you can remove mountains. But if you don't have love, you're nothing. Listen to what he says. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Preach white. Listen at this. Love suffers long. That means that you can't be going wild at somebody the first time they mistreat you. It suffers long. Love is kind. Love does not envy other people. Love is not puffed up with that big head because you got more than somebody else. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. Wait a minute. You mean if I think evil of folk? My love isn't real. Well, just read it yourself. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. What's that mean? You don't brag about your sin. And you are not to love to see others sin. But what you need to know is the truth. And God's truth can set you free. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Love never fails. But while there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Paul, can you give us something else? I sure can. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man or woman, I put away childish things. I'm trying to hip somebody out here today. But now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part. But then those things I shall even know as I know. What does that mean? God has not given us a totally clear vision of what heaven is like. But he gives us glimpses and we see heaven through a darkly glass. 
Somebody wanted to know. When I get to heaven, will I know mama? Will I know daddy? And what Paul seems to be saying here is now, you will know them. You see darkly. You can't quite make it out. But when God calls you home, amen, even now, I just know partly what it's like. But I shall know even as I am known. Now what, notice what he says. Now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Love causes you to do things that you don't want to do. Love causes you to sacrifice even when you want, don't want to sacrifice. And it was God's love that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life and I heard Jesus say one day Greater love had no man than this, that he will lay down his life for his friend. And the Lord's ultimate love was shown in his son Jesus. Mm -hmm. You see, man had gotten to such a place that he didn't love the Lord. He was always sinning, not caring about anything. And the Lord knew that uh, if man died like this, he would lift up his eyes in hell. Why? Because none of man's sin had been forgiven him. God loved us so much that he wanted our sins to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. And the old preacher said, God had to have somebody who was perfect to die for man's sin. God looked toward Abraham. Abraham said, I can't do it. I lied. Call my wife and my sister. Noah said, I can't do it because on the other side of the flood, I got drunk and my children saw my nakedness. David said, I can't do it. I fell in love with a married woman and had her husband killed. Can I get a witness here? Solomon, can you die for men sin? Solomon would say, God gave me so much wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I had a whole lot of women and concubines. But what got the Lord upset was when I let them have 
that idol God. And I had already told him, Lord have mercy, thou shalt have no other God before me. God was still looking for somebody who could die for man's sin. Can I get a witness here? He said, I better look for somebody else. Elijah, you won on, on Mount Carmel, but can you die for men's soul? He would have to say, no, I got scared when Jezebel said she was going to kill me. I didn't trust in God's word. But I heard in my sanctified imagination, Jesus said, prepare for me a body. I won't go down and die for man's soul. Matthew said he came from 42 generations. Can I get a witness here? John said he was there with God when God said, let there be. Jesus said, I'll die because I love you and I'll give my life up for you. And he came down, gave up his throne and glory to live among wicked men and wicked women they didn't appreciate him Lord have mercy they lied on him and even when they were crucified him instead of him calling for angels he said Father forgive them they think they know but they know they don't know what they're doing Jesus could have stopped the whole procedure but love made him let him nail him to a cross love made him let him put a crown of thorns on his head love made him allow them the nail nails in his hand. Love made them stand between two thieves. Love made him go in Joseph's new tomb. But when Jesus had had enough, Lord have mercy, he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. Love kept him there Friday night. Love kept him there all day Saturday. Love kept him there Saturday night. Love, love, love. Sunday morning, love lifted him out of that grave saying all power is in my hand I don't know about you but I love him today because who he is and what he's done that everybody can be saved oh I pray today that you ask the Lord Lord, give me that love so I can love you like you loved me. And oh, I thank him today because love lifted me. You may not think God loves you because you're going through something. But God allows you to go through some things to grow you up and when I look back and see what the Lord has done in my life 
I know I'm only here by God's love. Do you praise him today? You at home. You may be wondering now, does God really love me? If God loves me, why am I going through so much? The greatest lesson you ever learned did not come from good times. It came through heartaches and tears. Just think about your, your, your greatest trouble in your life. You see, I've learned from some of the things that I've gone through. And now I can say God loved me even though I was a wretch undone. God could have taken my life, but love lifted me. Aren't you glad today that God's love woke you up this morning? And we hear about over 30,000 people in Atlanta don't have anywhere to lay their heads. But God's love put a roof over your head. It might not be in the neighborhood that you want, but he has always made a way for you. And that's my message to you today. What happens when love grows cold? You lose relationships. You lose homes. And you lose your connection with God. But God's unconditional love loves you in spite of you. And you who you're going through something now, I want you to hear this. It won't last always. If you're at home right now, just, just say, this thing that I'm going through, won't last always because God's love is going to take care of me. I'll be all right. Come on back around. As we get ready to close the service, I want you to help me say this. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. After a while. Over yonder. Beyond the sky. Where there is a. Sickness. After a while. 
I'm going to walk will be like Sunday Along Hallelujah Boulevard will be like Sunday I can shout It will be like Sunday I can shout It will be like Sunday Thank you It will be like Sunday Thank you Never given your your life, your soul to the Master. Thank you, Lord. Won't you do it now? All you got to do is say with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. And believe that God rose him again from the dead because he loved us so much. You who today are going through something and I know some of you that I know what so many of our people are going through. God has told me to tell you he still loves you. The doors are open. I can hear the same you're calling. The doors are open. I can hear the same you're calling I can hear the same you're calling take your cross and follow follow me where he leads me, I will follow where 
he leads me I will follow where he leads me I will follow oh yes I'll go with him with him all the way I'll go with him through the garden I'll go with him through the garden I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him, with him all the way. You know what he'll do if you go with him? He will give. Me grace and glory, He will give me grace and glory, He will give me grace and glory. say where he leads me I will follow I will lift holy hands unto the Lord where he leads me I will follow where he leads me I felt God's you, presence in here today. Thank you, Lord. And if nobody else felt him, thank you, Lord. I felt him. Amen. And God is trying to speak to us, saying that yes, I know what you're going through. But I love you. And because I love you so much. Trouble don't last always. You might wonder how am I ever going to get a change out of this? Can I tell you, God is still working on your situation. Just praise Him anyhow. Praise Him for what He already brought you through. Thank you, Lord. Praise Him because He kept you. Thank you, Lord. And that He never left you. And even though sometimes you feel so low, you have to reach up to touch the ground. But God is still saying, You're not in there by yourself. For I'm right in that ditch with you. Let me thank again this wonderful staff. Thank you. Our background just came together. I didn't ask them for any special come together. They just came together anyhow. 
And when I get up to to sing, they just automatically come up. And what they're saying is, I want to help to our church clerk. God bless you. When I'm doing the FaceTime, the Face on the Facebook on Saturday, Wednesday, she's constantly encouraging people to share this with somebody else. Thank you so much. Deacon Roger Long God gave you a certain gift. And I want to thank you. I didn't, I just said, I want you to be the spokesman this year. And I didn't tell him what to say. I said, I trust your intelligence. And when he spoke the way he did, I felt like crying at home. Thank you, sir. Brother Jason Grandick. waits patiently on Sunday morning and and you know we've been feeding the staff and Lorraine calls ahead and tells them how much fish we're going to need that morning and when we get it here Jason disseminates it he says I want you to be, to be quiet because you got to preach again Thank you for being there, Brother Jason. God bless you. To our musical staff, thank God for you. That's right, good man. My nephew from Telecommunications Ministry. You know, you people are listening for you and all over the world. Ernestine and Sandra, they're back in the room back there, and these camera operators, you, you don't know, I think last Sunday, there must have been close to 5,000 people that were enabled to watch the services because of you all. Amen. Thank you so much. Now, don't forget, number one, There is a runoff election on Tuesday. Go ahead and, and vote. That's what Brother John Lewis gave his life. And others that we may have the right to vote. And the one that I have the most interest in is the sheriff race and I might be a bit prejudiced because I'm one of his chaplains and I've seen the works that Ted does pray over it I'm not trying to tell y'all what to do but I'm just telling you what I'm going to do and I thank God for him back to school that event is August the 21st and there are going to be some computers given out an evening of pleasure and fun and Angela says that she gave out the wrong date but we're straightening it out right now August the 21st in the evening and then our treasurer, that's his project. He says, I want to help raise some money for the church. I said, okay, what you going to do? He said, I, I got some masks that they promised to put Mount Ephraim's name on the mask. And I want to sell them to help my church. Tomorrow, call the church and say, 
tell Dick and Alexander, I want one of those masks. Did I, did I see one of those masks here today? And then I want to thank those of you who send your donations in. You have helped us to keep this church moving. Thank you so much. You see that? The 50th year color of black and gold. And it got my never name on and my name on it too. And you don't just wear this one time, he gives you something else you can put in the wear the next time. And that will help you. Now, how much did we say this was? $18. You get one, you can order it through our website and we'll get it to him. And I feel good every week when I meet our members. They say, you know, I was at home and I know you couldn't see me. But when you start doing that, lean on me. She said, I heard a sick lady say she got up out of bed and started moving with Mount Ephraim. And we're getting ready to do that now. Now you know we go to this way and to that way, all right? I want everybody to do this with me. Are you ready? Sadie, I see you there. Get up, get up, get up. Ready? I see my camera man, he's even moving now. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll let you carry on. Oh, it won't be long. I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on, oh, it won't be long, I'm gonna need one more time, lean on, lean on me, when you're not strong, I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on, oh, it won't be long. I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Call me, call me, call me, call me. It doesn't get too late. Call me, call me, call me. I might have call me an answer. Call me to what you're going through. Call me, call me, call me, call me. Let me thank our engineer and Jermaine. It's good to see you. And I thought I had him here in Atlanta. But they called him again over to Birmingham. I want to see that kind of salary you're going to be getting, man, because, you know, you're going to up and up and up. And then uh, my nephew. Thank God for him. He had to miss some Sundays. But he's back now. And we thank God for you. And then I missed Stacy's name today, Stacy Franklin. She's been going through a lot. And I looked at her Facebook page and she says it's a long journey. And I don't know what you are going through, Stacy, but I want you to know that you're not by yourself. Now me the grace of our once crucified 
and risen Savior. Rest, rule, and abide with this is people. Now, henceforth, and forevermore, let us sing together. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful day. God bless you.